Welcome back to the Fixed Ops Roundtable, and it is a great honor to welcome Marco Zwanenberg, a service technician from Naples Luxury Imports, and not just any technician, but Marco is one of the original founding fathers or founding members, if you will, of the Fixed Ops Roundtable. So, Marco, welcome back to the event. Why, well, thank you, Ted. Thank you for having me. Hi, Kara. How are you doing? I am wonderful. Thanks for perfect, being here. Perfect, perfect. Oh, it's it's a pleasure as always. Glad to be a part of this and love to see where this is all going and where it has gone from the very first moment. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Marco, you were there at the even before the very beginning, right? And uh, correct. You know, Kara, we just had uh, uh, Marco on the uh, Monday night show, so I know you had a chance to uh, uh, to get to meet Marco, and uh, um, she told me she was very impressed, uh, Marco, with a. Uh, you know, you're all the things that you told us at that end. I know the audience was as well. Perfect. Sure. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. That was a great show. That I would, you know, I appreciate it, Ted. Thank you. So I have to ask you, Marco, how did you meet Ted and get wrapped into all of this with him? The funny thing is, I think Ted and I started out on LinkedIn uh, about the same time. So we were just uh, associating ourselves, making connections with like-minded people in the same industry, in the same field. So we connected and, you know, we commented back and forth on each other's posts. And one day, Ted just gives me a call. He's like, hey, he's like, um, I'm in Orlando. I was like, how far is it from Naples? It's like about a four hours drive. I was like, you want to meet up? I was like, sure, why not? So... He flew into Orlando. I drove to Orlando. We had lunch at a very nice restaurant. And that was actually, uh, we could call that restaurant pretty much the uh, infirmary of uh, the round table. Yeah, That's where it all started. We started to talk and we shot some videos there. We, we bounced some ideas around. And what, six, seven weeks later, Ted, it happened. Yeah, Marco came up to New York, Kara. And uh, we did the first fixed uh, fixed operations roundtable, as I recall, Marco, is what we what we called it. And uh, we did right. it in my in my boardroom uh, in Manhattan. Yeah. And uh, you know, I I I kind of joke, but I'm I'm serious as well, Mark. I wasn't sure if anybody was going to show up with us. And did that room fill up? And did we take off some of your fellow lessees over there? Yeah, yeah, they. Uh, uh, Kara, I tell you, this was a loud and boisterous group, right? So uh, yes. they were not shy, and I'm not sure that even New Yorkers were ready for uh, you know the group that was in that conference room. Correct, correct. But the, the, all the videos and pictures that were taken that day and posted by all the ones individual that were there, um, it, it just it just exploded, and that just showed you know what I told you is that the industry needs this peer to peer direct information, I bouncing ideas around. It's just, it's been great. And speaking of which, you recently had a post on LinkedIn, um, which really yeah. blew up. And uh, uh, if I can, I'll, I'll show uh, uh, some photos that you put on there. Um, what inspired, Marco, what inspired you to, to make this post? Um, it's because when, when st stuff started to get rough, um, we were labeled as uh, as crucial employees, mm -hmm. and all the and rightfully so. But all the credits went out to the first responders, to the hospital people, the nurses, the doctors, etc. But people forget that without technicians, an ambulance will not make it to your door. A fire truck will not run. Hell, I can go as far as saying that without technicians, conveyor belts will not run. Factories will shut down. Uh, we have been working and working and working. We're putting our, our bodies on the line every day. And we get so much flack. Why is our car not done? Why it takes three weeks to, to get brakes? Well, as I mentioned in my post, we suffer the same issues that you suffer in the stores. That post really hit home. You had some very powerful things in there that you said. Yes, it did. And the what surprised me most is not just the amount of views, uh, it's the the caliber of the reactions. I like your I like your hashtag there. Kara, he's got fixed fixed ops warriors. Yeah. Correct. So as I was reading this post, 
I know that it definitely hit home for everybody in the automotive industry. And just to paraphrase this little post uh, by a bit, you know, you're talking about the last couple of years being difficult um, for not only everybody in the world, but especially in the automotive industry. And it's, it's kind of been overlooked of how we had shortages and you guys are being overworked. You're tired. And really, you want to get the customer's car back to them quicker than they assume. You don't want to hold their car. And I do love your hashtag of that you guys, all of you technicians, are fixed ops warriors. And, you know, y'all are just tired to give you yeah. some slack, man. You are putting your bodies on the line all day, every day. And the cars are so complex that you want to take care of the customer and give them the best experience possible and that y'all are here for them and you want to relay that to all consumers. So um, I think the last line sums it up pretty well. You guys are unicorns and what you do is nothing short of magic. Correct. I always I said Disney, Disney has nothing on us. <laughs> and, the, and Cara, to hear that straight from the technician, I think, uh, Marco, that's something that a lot of people... Uh, have not heard before, you know, because there's always a an intermediary. You go through the service advisor, you go through the service man, you go through somebody, you don't go directly to the tech. And here you are now, the tech, talking to the consumer. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yes. Good. Um, I, I've been saying for many, many years that um, just the overall public view on technicians has to change the amount of schooling and investment that we put in ourselves, that our companies put in us is absolutely insane. I mean, you walk around with, you know, the latest and greatest cell phone and you want this thing to seamlessly integrate with your car, but you know how fast technology develops. Same goes for us, but we have to keep up with everything. We almost have sometimes weekly trainings, whether it be online or being sent to classes, um, it is an ongoing battle against technology. So like I mentioned in my post, I don't get paid for just diagnosing your car. I get paid for fixing your car. We're not a parking lot. I don't want to hold your car for weeks waiting on a part. I want to get your car in and out that same day for multiple reasons. Free up a loaner so another customer can come in. Everybody can get paid going all the way from the GM to to the technician and customer satisfaction. We don't want to hold on to your car. We don't want you to be in a loaner for three, four weeks. We want to get them fixed. We want to get them fixed right. We want to get you out the door with a big smile, refer us, talk about us to other people and come back in for your next need. I, I got to tell you this story. Uh, yesterday uh, morning early, I dropped my car off at the dealership uh, for a recall. And I've got a, a new vehicle, right? It's only, I, I got it uh, seven, eight months ago, right? And uh, right. it doesn't have a, Cara doesn't have a lot of miles, okay? It's not driven a whole lot. And so they gave, I had arranged for a loaner car, right? And um, I got a text and a phone call this afternoon from the service advisor, Marco, uh, letting me know that, uh, you know, for the recall, there's a, uh, a part, it's a wiring harness that's on back order and mm -hmm. they don't know when it's going to come in. Okay. But to be patient and I could still, yep. you know, be driving, I'll be driving the, the loaner car. I don't know for how long, but um, they will get back to me. So, you know, I'm thinking the same thing as a consumer, right? Wow. You know, it's, uh, you know, I, I can't believe it. Right. I mean, in, in technical terms, we call those parts that are on uh, intergalactic back order, to stay with the theme. We call them made out of unobtainium. And unfortunately, you have to think of it from the entire fixed ops department point of view. Having you in a loaner costs us money every minute you're in it. For a recall that may pay anywhere from like a half an hour, maybe, Warranty rate, warranty rate on the on the parts, we're losing money left and right. Mm -hmm. So again, like I said, we don't want to hold on to your car. We want to get them in and out. But yeah, that's what you're just describing, Ted. That's that's daily in our business. 
Very regardless of brand. I know that every dealership's dealing with that and, and it's something that we just have to, you know, join together in and, and realize that this is reality. So. Right. So part of my post was for to bring this out to just the public to let people know it's like, hey, you know, we're really trying. We want to. It's not us. Give us a break. Stop yelling at me because I do not make the parts. I install the parts. Yeah. So this post goes for and as, as some comments have said, not just for the automotive industry, for a lot of different mm -hmm. industries, but People, slow down, give us a break. We'll get to you. We really will. And in, in the post, Marco, you showed us your hands. You work with your hands. And uh, that can't be easy all the time. With a lot, I've seen other things, pictures that you've posted in the past of, you know, vehicles that, uh, you know, you had to pull apart, uh, to, you know, to get to something. And uh, I'm like, wow, there's a lot there. Right. Um, that picture was actually taken after I did an, eva an AC evaporator core in a car. What, what the consumer sees is this nice, lush, smooth, soft dashboard. Behind it, that I, all, I have to take out to get to that part, there's a lot of sharp objects. A lot of sharp objects. And any technician in the world will agree with me. And this is what happens. Same in the engine compartment or under the vehicle. Uh, that's why there are so many technicians that as they get older, they have to just stop doing what they're doing because of, you know, joint damage, skin issues, uh, tinnitus, vision issues, you name it. And you can wear all the pr protective gear that you want, all the POE that you want, but eventually it just takes its toll. Yeah, wow. for sure. Wow. So we're talking about, you know, some of the hardships that you have um working as a tech in these dealerships i have to ask you though um kind of to change the directory here what's the ideal environment that inspires and motivates you to perform at your best actually um and as tat knows from one of the previous panels that i was on um it's not money yes money is very important we no one works for fun seriously we all need money we all want to make money you can pay me $300 an hour, but if the culture is pure poison, I don't want it. Yeah. I want to be assisted. I want to be respected and treated as a human being. I'm not a machine. I'm not, you know, for the longest time, people thought that, you know, technicians or mechanics, you know, that debate is still out there as well, but they're the scum of the workforce. We're not even on the corporate ladder. We're holding the corporate ladder. While... The vast majority of profit for a dealership comes out of fixed operations. There's a reason why they call it fixed ops absorption, not variable ops absorption. We keep the doors open. We pay for everything. Mm -hmm. So really, as long as management is behind the technicians, comes in and talks to us. Like I have a great service director who I've known for 13, 14 years now. The GM is fantastic. He knows everybody by name, even outside of, I, I ran into him yesterday after work and just like, hey, hi, how are you doing? And how's the kid? And, and perfect. Just on a human level instead of, oh, I'm the GM and you're the technician. No, it's just, we want to be respected. We want to be recognized. Yes. Also tell me what I'm doing wrong or how I could do it better because it's all still a learning curve. Even after 25 plus years of being in this industry, as fast as it develops, give me the help that I need in the form of give me a reliable internet resource, like a reliable internet speed. Give mm -hmm. me the tools that I need. Give me the support, but treat me as a human being. Marco, why do you think um, most the great majority of technicians don't speak up like this. And we don't hear this from the techs. Why, why, why is that with the, uh, you know, I know that in dealership, the technicians know what's going on, but uh, why are they not uh, as vocal? I think it's a multifaceted issue. Uh, first of all, I think that as a technician, I am 
in a unique pivot point here of being so involved with you and the Fix Up Roundtable that I'm actually allowed to have a voice and be being brought on for segments like this or the, the Monday evening thing that we did or the panels that we did. And I think that most technicians are just not even on LinkedIn. And what they post is more about their technical accomplishments versus maybe it's they're afraid of uh, retaliation uh, maybe they're afraid of losing their job or anything along those lines. But people need to speak up, and I'm, I'm not afraid to. If I get fired over something that I say, I'm sorry, I'm a hell of a technician. I'll find a job faster than if a manager will get fired. Well, <laughs> so I, I have no issues with that. But I'm also not in a, a dark, ranting, and raving mode. Right. Right. Yeah. I want everything to work together. Um, the entire shop, including the advisors and parts, bring in F and I in sales. We all work under the same roof. And, you know, I hate to sound cliche here, but can we all just get along? Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you've got an audience here and uh, you know who the audience is. Okay. Uh, you know, we've got the dealers and GMs. We've got, you know, managers. We've got uh, advisors. We've got people all around the industry watching us today. You know, allied industry, OEMs, DMS providers. So, you know, you've got everybody's ear, Marco. So um, if you had to have this opportunity, which you do now, um, what would you want to let everybody know? Okay. Speaking you as the voice of the technicians, you know, speaking to this audience, um, you know, what do you want everyone to, you know, to be aware of? I, I would love for OEMs and higher management, whether it's higher management of a dealership group or GMs that are not so interested in fixed operations to come spend some time with us. See what we're being put through. See what it's actually like. And it's not all bad. We have fun. You know, I've worked for several dealerships. I've worked for several independent companies. There was always a good bunch of people, and we always had a good time, and we, we take care of each other. That's what most technicians do because no one else looks out for us, so we're a tight-knit group, like a band of brothers almost. But OEMs, if you're listening, spend time with us. Listen to the boots on the ground. Lead from the front. Sometimes the things that you come up with are just not the best, but be willing to listen to us. We're willing to listen to you, and obviously we have to do what you tell us to do. But listen, pay some attention. Let's, let's come to a joint conclusion about what works and what doesn't work, and that will benefit all of us in the long run. Kara, uh, you work for a, a dealership a group and um, part of a, a much bigger group as well. And, um, you know, so you're retail, Kara, and you're getting to hear this, you know, from, from the technician uh, point of view. What's, you know, Kara, what's your perspective? Because I know you, I see you, you do interact, you know, with the folks, you know, on, uh, on both the variable and on the fixed op side as well. Um, Kara, I'm curious what comes to mind, you know, for you. Yeah, I, I consider myself fortunate because our studio, our marketing office is in the same building as the reconditioning center. So every day when I park my car, I have to walk past some of the technicians that are there way before me and oftentimes stay late, way later than I do. And they are constantly working. And there's sometimes that, you know, they get left alone, but something that I, I take pride in and our dealerships here is that I do see our managers back there sometimes, you know, just observing, having conversations with our techs, seeing how they're doing. And we do have kind of a close knit family here, but I've seen other dealerships that might not, you know, I don't even pretend to know what happens back there, but I can tell you one thing is I don't know what time they get here. I don't know if they even take a lunch break and they leave after dark. So these guys are committed and women are committed to their jobs. And I know that um, they're working their hardest to make sure that our process is as tight knit as can be. So 
I have a greater appreciation because I see it on the forefront every single day versus maybe our sales staff and stuff. But I know how hard you guys work and, and y'all are always there when I walk next door to ask a question about a car. Is this when I have issues? They are quick to answer. They've always got solutions for me and our dealerships would not work. Our sales staff could not sell cars if it wasn't for these guys in our service department and our reconditioning center working so hard every single day. Wow. Marco, you got the last word today. Oh boy. Well, and if that's the case, you know, I, I thank you, Kara, for, for all that. Um, I've always said as long as cars fall out of vending machines, uh, I don't need sales, but sales needs me. Um, it, indeed, it's, 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 it's rough. It's a dedication. It's a passion. Uh, you will find that the true diehard technicians out there, including dinosaurs like myself, it's just in our blood. Well, we try to leave, but we keep coming back. Um, technology is developing so fast, and we all have to keep up with it. I think first and foremost, the just the perception of what a technician does and what is involved in our daily life has to change. That's why I, of course, you know, we had some issues over the last few years, but service clinics really work. It opens up eyes to our customers, like what their car really is all about. You know, don't make it like a secret what happens back there. Just let's all join in. Let me show you what I do. Maybe you'll respect me a little bit more. Love it. Well, Marco, we're going to have to have you come back and, uh, and pick this up at the next event. So um, I, uh, I, uh, I welcome you to, you know, take the floor again. And I'm sure uh, there'll be more things that uh, are unexpected that come up over the next few months. So uh, <laughs> I look forward to having you share with us again. Well, thank you, Ted. Thank you for having me again. Thank you, Kara. I appreciate everything. And Marco, I, I think Kara and I owe you a big thank you too, you know, because, uh, sure. you know, this uh, this event owes you a, a great uh a great big thank you for uh, helping to put this together uh, for uh, you being know, a founding your, father. Yeah, brother. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, it's been absolutely my pleasure. It's just it's still mind blowing. Just like Ted and I talk about sometimes, like from how this started to where it is now and where it keeps going. Who knew? It's it's unbelievable. Yeah, it's all right, Marco. Thank you so much. Absolutely, Ted. Thank you. Thank you, Kara. Marco Zwanenberg uh, from Naples Luxury Imports here today at the Come Fix. Come see up. me. <laughs>